Well, hello, I'm Josh Wallet, and we're going to take a look at Market Machine today, which is a tool for developing and generating market charts and reports, as well as a regression tool. Uh, rather than a lot of the little short videos that I've already put out about this tool, I wanted to just put together one longer one where it sort of just shows you an example of how I use it in my everyday work. So uh, we're going to navigate to where I've saved my market machine copy on my machine, on my computer, and we're going to double click to open it. So you want to know where you've saved the file on your computer. Now, um, I want to, at this point, input a new set of raw data. So I'm going to navigate to where I saved that. This is the export from my MLS. And it's been imported. All right, let me go ahead and filter this data uh, because I want to I get pretty specific. I don't want to analyze all of the almost 7,000 data points that it brought in. So let me apply some filters here. Now let's choose less than or equal to. And it was built in 1982 in this example. So let's do this. Um, let's see, we do not want a rented lot. No to rented lot. We do want real estate included, and we want it to be a stick build. Now remember, uh, for, for your MLS, it, these columns are going to look a little bit different, and you're going to filter them a little bit differently. So let me go back to my control tab. I filtered it the way I like. These dates look right for the data I imported. I'm going to push this data out to the standard pages and the regression pages. Let me just kind of peruse through. Yes, that's the criteria I wanted. Of course, I changed tabs. You probably noticed. Clicked on this tab down here. Um, here's the MC. I'll fill that into my report later. Let's go to the second report tab there at the bottom of the screen. Let me, let me see if I should expand this at all. No, that's pretty good scale for those charts. Pretty good information. All right, I'm going to leave that alone. Go to my summary page. I think, yeah, the, I'll just double check that same criteria. It's just exactly what I wanted. This is going to help me with the top of page two for my uh, sales and listings that are similar to the subject because that's how I filtered the data. All right, now I'm going to go to the regression. Let's see. I already have some of the standard fields here. Let me go ahead and add a few um, for this model. For this particular segment, I know there's going to be some that, that are, are going to be valuable to include. Um, I'm going to include garage bays. Call it something logical here. It's a value because my MLS, that column has has numbers in it. Um, I, I'm dealing with some properties in this area that only have two bedrooms and they tend to have a very large and significant effect on sales prices and values. So I'm going to actually treat this one, even though it's numbers there, I'm going to treat it as a dummy variable. And I'm just going to say, okay, if it is a two bedroom property, what happens to the sale prices. So let's add that variable as a dummy variable. Let's go ahead and um, this this is a an area that has had some improvements to some properties and they tend to sell for notably more. So let's see again we need to know the reliability, the quality of the data, but um, in this particular MLS system, realtors do tend to indicate a year remodeled if it truly has experienced some remodeling. So let's let's see if if that actually is is coming across as something that that st is statistically reliable. Um, pretty good. Our R squared. So I clicked Run Regression. If you missed it, R squared here, 81% for for this area. That's really good, especially since I don't have any quality 
uh, variable that I can include from this data that uh, I exported from the MLS. Being remodeled, wow, yeah, so that, that jives with what I know to be true by pairing sales against each other. Um, that could certainly be true. Here's the range that is statistically likely for remodeling to add. Um, you can kind of go through and take a look at which are more reliable, which are less reliable. So this is a pretty decent model as supplemental support to other uh, adjustment derivation methods. Let's just see visually here. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. It's pretty close. It's good predictions. Let's predict for the subject. Click the prediction button rather than the tab at the bottom. So this is all refreshed now from this particular study we just did. And uh, so it is a 1,250 square foot house. It's on 0.15 acres. It's 33 years old. Let's see. Days past sale? No. For this particular appraisal, I'm doing a current market value, not a past market value, retrospective. Um, it is not REO or HUD. It's not short. It has a two-car garage. No, it does not only have two bedrooms, so this one is a zero. It is not a two-bedroom house, and this one has not been remodeled, so no, putting a zero there. So here's a forecast for this particular market based on this model I developed for this particular subject property. Let me go back to the regression, and I am going to, for this one, I'm going to print... all of these, so I've selected all of those boxes on the left. Let's get this generated because now that I have all these robust charts and graphs and data, I can then um, apply my human brain, right, my human market analysis experience to this and come up with some good narrative to really sum up what's going on in this market and what's going on with adjustment rates. So uh, let me just make sure, yeah, I mean, this is printing just what we saw. Here are the sale prices. Here's that summary page. Criteria is there. Okay, good, let me close that out. I'll go back to, this is where I opened Market Machine from. Here's the folder it was saved in. And here is the generated PDF and the generated work file support, all the sales and all the listing types that I had filtered and put into this study. So I think I've got what I need. I'm going to attach some of these pages to the report and I'll have a really good start, a really good jump on all my market analysis um, with, with all this information. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to answer any questions you send to me. Hopefully you can see I've spent uh, less than eight minutes on um, doing a market study and you can see I probably could have done it in about five if I hadn't been stopping and sort of narrating and, and telling you what I was doing. So I hope you can see that if you are doing market analysis, this will save you time. If you're not doing market analysis, well, shame on you, you should be. This will make it Pretty easy to crunch those numbers, though. So take a look at this and see how it can help you. Thank you.